Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net. Uh, you can use our Zelle app uh, to box13 at greatdetectives.net or by mail to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And uh, you can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Also over at greatdetectives.net this weekend, check out my review of the latest uh, graphic novel uh, inspired by a 1946 Superman radio serial, uh, Superman Smashes the Clan. Uh, You can check that out over at greatdetectives.net. Uh, well, now it's time for today's episode of Dragnet. The original air date is July the 5th, 1955, and the title is The Big Rush. Dragnet. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a robbery detail. Two men have been terrorizing the tavern keepers in your city. In spite of your efforts, they continue to run free. Your job, stop them. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department... You will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, June 14th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Frank Smith, the boss of Chief Detective Thad Brown. My name's Friday. We're on our way out from the office, and it was 11.13 a.m. when we got to the corner of 7th Street and Sunset Boulevard. Black Dog Bar and Grill. In the back. No. Hi. How are you? Well, how will it be? Police officers. Oh, cops, huh? That's right. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. How are you? Nick uh-huh. Thomas. I guess about last night, huh? That's right. We'd like to go over a couple things with you. Well, sure. Can I get you anything? No. Uh, you mind if I have a cup of coffee while we talk? No, go ahead. Okay. Sure surprised me. What's that? Last night. I sure wasn't expecting it. Yeah. You know, you read about things like that happening, but you just never figure them happening to you. Mm-hmm. Of course, you've been in the business as long as I have. You ought to expect it. At least that's the way I figure it. Yeah. Well, okay, what do you want to know? Well, according to what you told the officers last night, the men came in the place about 11.30, is that right? That's right, 11.30. You sure about the time? Oh, yeah. You see, I always looked at that newscaster, 11.15, 11.30. Mm-hmm. He went off the air, and they just put up the card where it tells what station it is, and this guy walked right in. Yeah. I can't stand it myself. What? The newscaster, I can't stand him. Me and the missus have gotten some real bad beefs about him. Is that right? Oh, yeah, she digs him, but I can't stand him myself. He's a real no good. Mm-hmm. He's the kind of a guy where if some old man spit in the sidewalk, he could build it up so we should evacuate the whole city. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Well, he's like that. Mm-hmm. He's a real no good. I wonder if you checked this description of the two men who held you up. Sure. You know those two guys any place ever saw him again, I'd sure know them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's them, the tall one and the fat one. That's them, I know them any place. What'd they say to you? Well, hardly nothing at all. Just walked up to the bar, leaned over, and told me to hand over the money. I see. Do you remember the exact words? You mean the way they said it? Yeah. Well, let me see. I think it was, uh... Okay, Mac, this is a stick-up. Do like we tell you, you won't get hurt. Like that, he talked. Mm-hmm. Just give us the money, don't make any noise. Yeah. Well, I did. Walked right back to the register, opened it up, and handed over the loot. And what happened then? Told me to keep quiet, and then they walked out of the place. Mm-hmm. Anybody else in here? Well, there's a couple of people up in front. Did the thieves bother them? No, they were just after the money in the register. Other couple didn't even know there was anybody here until it was all over. I see. There were a couple of kids. What's that? Kids, you know what I mean. Like young and real in love. Roof could have fallen in. They wouldn't have known it. Yeah. 
Cops talked to him last night, but they couldn't tell him nothing. You say you'd know these men if you saw them again, huh? You'd just get all the money you can on that one. Mm. Did you see if they had a car? Who? The men who held you up. Oh, no. They didn't have one, did they? Well, I didn't see it. Is there anything about them that you can tell us? No, just a couple of guys. One tall, the other one fat. Did you see if they had a gun? You think I'd have handed over the money if they didn't? What kind of a weapon was it? It was a gun, the kind with bullets. You pull the trigger, it goes bang like that. Yeah, it was a gun. I know, but was it a revolver or an automatic? Well, I don't know. I guess it was a... Uh... Well, come to think of it, I guess... Hey, you know you're right? What do you mean? I didn't see it. Hmm. Not even a peek. Guy had his hand in his pockets like this, you know, like this? Yeah. I didn't actually see the gun, though, not for real. Mm-hmm. He just had it in his pocket. Yeah. Hey, you figure he was just playing a joke on me? What's that? A funny that he really didn't have a gun at all? Well, we wouldn't know. Well, why not? What? Well, why don't you know? It's your job, isn't it? Knowing things like that, bunch of crooks running around, you don't even know if they've got a gun. The fine lot of cops you guys are. Mm-hmm. Hey, I might have just given him that money for nothing. If he didn't have a gun, there was no reason to hand it over. No reason at all. I should have found out. That's what, huh? What do you mean? I made a grab at the guy. Probably didn't have nothing in the pocket but just his hand or something like that. Yeah. If he didn't have one, if I was right, I could have told you guys. What if it was the other way? Huh? What if you were wrong? From the method of operation and the description of the suspects, we knew that they were the same two men who had staged six robberies in the past week. We showed the latest victim the mug shots from the packages that the stats office had turned for us. He pointed out three of the pictures and said they looked something like the hold-up men, but he was unwilling to make even a tentative identification. 11.56 a.m. We returned to the office and put in a call to Leighton Prince. They hadn't been able to turn anything of value. A canvas of the area around the bar had netted nothing. The case stood where it had seven days before when the robbery was first reported. 1.15 p.m. Well, it doesn't seem to be a directional trend. No, they're hitting all over, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Anything from Burton? A list of names came in this morning. We've already checked most of them out. We could use a few more leads. I'd settle for one. Ben. You seen the skipper? Yeah, I was in earlier. I don't think he's in the office now. I wonder when he's going to climb on it. I don't know. I've been expecting it, Joe. Yeah. Better off around? I haven't seen him. Why? Well, he said he might be able to help us turn something. Yeah. Said he had an informer down on L.A. Street. Mm-hmm. Hot shot. Let's go. Hmm? Same two. Yeah. They hit again. Frank and I left the office and drove out to the scene of the latest robbery. It was a small restaurant located on South Spring. By the time we got there, a radio card arrived and the officer was checking the area. You the cops? Are you? Are you more cops? That's right. Well, uh, that's what I thought. Other fellow, he left. He said he was going to look for the crooks. So he just went up the street. You want to tell us what happened? Held up, that's what. Held up. Yes, we understand. Did the officer get a description of the thieves? Sure, got it first thing. Said something about doing a broadcast or something. I'm not sure what he meant, but uh, that's what he said. All right. You want to give us your name? Hector Pip. What's that? Pip. P-I-P. Like C. Uh-huh. Colin Doyle wrote a story about him. Pips. C. You no. Know. Yep. Hector Pip. This is my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Sure thing. Now, uh, <clears throat> what do you want to know? Well, would you tell us what happened, please, sir? Better get on the ball. Can't stand around and waste time. Better get the fellas what did it. Mm-hmm. Came in right through that door. Came in and told me it was a stick-up. That it just as plain as anything. Stick up. Mm-hmm. Said to me to hand over the money in the cash register. Over. How much was it? Well, I'm not sure. It must have been about $60, $70. I'm not sure. Did you see him when they left? Well, certainly. You couldn't very well miss him. Small place. Just stood here and watched him go. Watched my money go right out the door. Yes, sir. What I meant was, did you see him get in the car? No, I didn't. No, I sure didn't. Just stood here and watched him go. But uh, I didn't see no car. Was there anybody else in the place? Oh, there was one fellow. Well, where's he? He left. All excitement got into gear and he left. Chintzy, too. Chintzy. What do you mean? Owed me for a piece of cream pie and a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Have you seen him before? No, a new face. He ain't from around here. Brand new. Did you hear either of the two men use a name of any kind? I sure did, yeah. You want to tell us? Do I have to? Well, we'd like you to, if you will. Lard. That's what he said. Lard. Which one? The tall one, like a fence picket. He's the one. He called the other one Lard. No. But you said he used the name. Sure. But he was talking to me. Yeah. Well, look, is there anything else you can tell us about the men that might make it easier to identify them? No, just two fellas. One tall, thin, other one fat. Mm-hmm. Didn't have no reason to call me lard. 
I've been on a diet for a couple of weeks. Eating those pills that swell up in your stomach. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess they work for some people. Just make me feel as though I had a sponge. Mm -hmm. Was there anything outstanding about the man? No. Not that comes to mind, no. They have a gun? Not right off. What do you mean? Didn't have one when they come in. Of course, I, I didn't know that. No, sir, I didn't have any idea, no. Mm -hmm. Got him now, though. Stole him with the money. What? 38 revolver and the 25 automatic. Took him. Frank and I took the latest victim to the city hall. While he started to check the mug books, we ran the serial numbers of the guns through the record section. We found that they were both registered to Hector Pip. At 3.46 p.m., Frank came back to the office from the mug room. Joe, back here. How's it going? Oh, well, he still hasn't found anything. What's he checking now? Coming out, books. Got four or five more to go through. Did you show him the pictures of stats office turn? Yeah, nothing. Hi, what you guys doing? Hi, Walt. Mug room. I'm looking for you. Yeah? Talked to a fellow down on Main this morning. Mm-hmm. Says he knows the guys you're looking for. <laughs> We made arrangements for somebody to stay with the victim, and then Frank and I left the city hall. Sergeant Walt Bitteroff drove us over to talk to his informant. We found him in a cheap hotel on Wall Street. All right, Walt, come on in. Thanks, Angie. Uh, you get it? Yeah. Here you are. Hey, cool. Right out of the icebox. Yeah, thanks. These are the two guys I told you about, Angie. Oh, yeah. Hey, you want some cold beer? No. No, thanks a lot. How about you, Walt? Uh-uh. You don't mind if I have one? Well, go ahead. Oh, I must have had a good time last night. Yeah. Eyes feeling like they're three feet apart. Uh-huh. Hey, nothing like a cold beer the next morning. Mm -hmm. Hey, girlfriend gave me some new glasses, like in the beer commercials. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah, she looks good, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, sir. That's what I needed. <clears throat> Funny. What? Funny about beer. Always tastes good, but a glass like this makes it taste better. Ambrosia. Pure ambrosia. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if we can get down to business, Angie. Hmm? Ah, sure, sure. Now I get my head back. What can I do for you? you? said you had some information on the two guys who were pulling these bar holdups. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'd like you to tell Friday and Smith here about it. That cop? That's right. You're after the fellas, huh? Mm-hmm. Walt tell you anything about setup? What do you mean? Well, anything you get, it didn't come from me. Yeah, they know that, Angie. Well, I gotta make sure. I remember something that helps you out. I forget it right away. You talk to me five minutes from now, I don't remember. Deal? All right. What about the guys? Heavy yeah, got in town a couple of months ago. Where are they from? St. Louis. You got the names? Yeah, part of them. What do you mean? Well, just what they're called. That's all I got. Well, that'll do. Well, don't pay to ask too many questions, you know. Yeah. Step on somebody's toes and you find a foot in your face. What about the names? Well, the tall one's called Ronnie. Fat guy's tag whale. Is that what everybody calls them? All I heard. You know where they live? Nope. Where'd you meet them? I move around. I run into them a couple of bars seen them once or twice. Well, how do you know they're the ones we're after? Well, just figures, that's all. Got a big roll, talk loud, the way they look, just figures. Mm -hmm. You know where we can pick them up? I haven't got any idea. They drive in the car? Well, not that I've seen. Anything else you can tell us about them? You've had it. Have either one of them fallen? Well, we never spent an evening talking about it, but it figures they did. Back east, maybe? Yeah, I guess so. I heard the whale say this was the first time they'd been on the coast. Mm -hmm. All right, Angie, if there's nothing else. Uh, there isn't. If you hear anything, Angie, we'd appreciate a call. Works out, I'll let you know. I'm not going to put anything in writing. Those jokers hear about it, and I'd have to dig a hole. Okay. Thanks for coming by, Walt. Yeah. Uh, glad I've met you guys. See you again, huh? Yeah, yeah. sure. Hey, uh, thanks for the beer, Walt. It's okay. Sure made the difference. First got up, I felt like a gang of midgets had been playing soccer in my mouth. Mm hmm Rough last night. Got to make a few calls around, find out. Huh? What kind of time I had. We returned to the office and sent a radiogram to the St. Louis Police Department requesting all information on anyone in their files who'd used the nicknames Ronnie or Whale. We checked the two names through our moniker file without result. The next day, Wednesday, June 15th at 5.26 p.m., we got word from the East. Here it is, Joe. St. Louis? Yeah, looks like they turned them. Let me see. Ronald Saba and Gerard Llewellyn. How about mugs? Oh, they're sending stand-ups right away. Should be here in the morning, then, shouldn't they? Yeah. The hot one, I'll get it. What is it? Robbery out on Olympic. Sounds like Ronnie and the whale. 
How long ago? Just left the place. Shot it up pretty bad. Anybody hurt? Yeah. Policeman got in their way. The Green Tree Cafe was located at the corner of Olympic Boulevard and Estrada Street. By the time we got there, an ambulance had arrived and the wounded officer had been removed to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. A felony car from Central Division had arrived at the scene and had started to search for the officer's assailants. We got the story from the bartender, Alvin Jaggers. Well, two guys come in, like I told you, walked right in and told me it was a holdup. How'd the policeman get shot? On the way out, it happened. After I give the guys the money, started to leave. Abner saw him, tried to stop him. You know the officer, do you? Yeah, he comes in once in a while. Him and his wife come in for steak sandwiches. Was his wife with him tonight? Yeah. I think she went up to the hospital with him. I think that's where she went. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, when Abner saw these two fellas, you know, with a holdup man? Yeah. But when he saw him, he told him to put down the guns. Where was he standing? You mean Abner? That's right. Oh, he was up there by the door. Him and the missus was in the front booth, and the guys went right by him when they come in. Yeah. He was standing right up by the door, told him to put down the guns and give up. Well, now, did he have his gun out of the holster? Yeah. You know, he had a kind of aim like this here. Mm-hmm. I reckon he was afraid of the people in the place, you know, if he had to shoot or something. Mm-hmm. And these two fellas stopped by when they saw him dead in their steps, told Abner to get out of the way. Yeah. He didn't budge none. Held his ground for sure. Him right there and them here, see? Mm-hmm. Now, the tall one, he yelled that they was going to leave and Abner shouldn't try to stop him. Uh-huh. And they started to walk outside and Abner brought the gun up so as he could shoot at him. Yeah. Didn't make it, though. Shot him dead center right here in the chest. After that, they run out the place, took off down the street. Did the officer shoot at him at all? Mm-mm. Didn't have no chance. <laughs> Guess he was finished before he started. Well, did the men get into a car? Well, if they did, I didn't see him. Too much going on. Did either one of these men use a name while they were in here? How you mean? Well, did they call each other by name? Now, let me think about that for a minute. Yeah, I think they did. What was it, do you remember? Well, after the shooting the tall one, he turned the other fellow and he said, Come on, well, let's get out of here. Uh-huh. Which one of them did the actual shooting? No, I couldn't tell you that. What do you mean? Well, both of them shot about the same time. It wasn't more than a half a second difference. Bang, bang, real fast. Both about the same time. I don't know if they both hit Abner, but they both shot at the same time. Have you seen these men around before? You know, matter of fact, I have. They've been in here? Yeah, must have been three, four weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Come in with Georgia. I guess that's pretty good friends. Who's she? Regular customer spent a lot of time in here. Drinks bangers. Rough. Mm-hmm. You know we can get in touch with her? Shouldn't be too hard. Hmm? She lives down next block. We left the bar and walked to the entrance of the apartment hotel down the street. According to the building register, Georgia Wells occupied apartment 314. We rang the buzzer and after a few moments we were admitted to the building. The elevator wasn't working, so we walked up three flights. Oh, man, I guess I'm getting old. Yeah. Makes you wonder how far you'd get without all the modern conveniences. Huh? Yeah. This is in here. Yeah. Better try it again. Yeah. Yeah? Georgia Wells? That's right. I know you. Police officers, we'd like to talk to you. What about? Might be better if we came inside. Sure, come on in. Nothing here to hide. Come on. I'll look around, Frank. Yeah. What's he looking for? Just want to check the place. You ain't going to find anything here. I got no beef with the cops. Never been in any trouble before. I want to keep it that way. All right. It's clean, Joe. You're going to tell me what this is all about. You know a couple of men named Ronald Saba and Gerard Llewellyn? Why are you asking? You know them? Yeah. You know where they are? No, look. Maybe if you tell me why you're looking for the boys, I can help you out. It's a police matter. You go find them yourself. When did you see them last? A couple of days ago. Where? Bar over on 6th. You know where they live? Look, mister, I don't carry no water for them, but I'm not going to blow the whistle until I know what the beef is. It's pretty serious, and you're not doing yourself any good acting like this. You know where we can find them? Look, I'm going to level with you. I know the boys, sure. They're a lot of laughs, good spenders. That's all it is with us. We got it that you're pretty good friends. You've been talking to the landlady. She's all the time sticking her nose in where it don't belong. That's so? Yeah. She's hacked at me anyway. Go out of her way to make trouble. All the time, she'll go out of her way. And why'd she do that? She don't like me, that's why. Hmm. She's got no reason. She just don't like me. All the time yelling about how I'm using too much laundry, how I let the water run too long, beefing about how I'm not supposed to do no cooking in the place. Pot of coffee, and she's ready to take it in front of the U.N. Mm-hmm. I told the truth. Boys and me have been out a couple of times. Dinner, drinks, maybe a show, that's all. There's nothing serious between us. Matter of fact, they both leave me cold, romantic. Well, then you shouldn't worry about telling us where to find them. I just don't want to get mixed up in nothing. That's all there is to it. I don't want to get dragged into something I didn't build. You can see that, can't you, huh? You can see that. 
Where do we find them? They'll be here in 40 minutes. We put in a call to the office and told them where we were. We got out a local broadcast on an all-points bulletin asking the two suspects be picked up. 5.52 p.m. We settled down to wait for the men. What are they supposed to do when they get here? Just keep out of the way. There's going to be no shooting, is there? Not unless they start it. You just don't know anymore. What's that? You go out with a guy, nothing serious, a few laughs, and you end up in trouble. Ever tell you what they did for a living? Ronnie mentioned something about starting a car agency. Yeah. He had some deal back east where he could get the cars cheap, and he figured on having them driven out here and selling them. Told me how him and the whale was going to clean up. Mm-hmm. Said it was the sweetest deal they ever come across. Real sweet, they said. Mm-hmm. Joe. Yeah. You better get in the other room, Miss Wells. Yeah, sure. Please, no shooting. Right, go on. Go ahead. Hi, honey. All right, mister. Hold it right there. Who's this? Come on, turn around. What? Turn around. Put your hands up on that wall. Yeah. Here, Joe. 38. Where'd you get this, Saba? I don't know what you're talking about. This gun, where'd it come from? I never saw it before. It was in your coat. Well, then you creeps put it there. It ain't mine. Where's Llewellyn? Oh? Gerard Llewellyn. I never heard of him. All right, put your hands down. Can I turn around now? Yeah. You guys gonna tell me what this is all about? You know more than we do. Well, I ain't gonna argue about that. Where's the whale? You guys been on the spike. I don't know what you're talking about. You wanna call downtown, get somebody out here, we'll take him in. Yeah. Gotcha, huh? You lousy bum. You faint on it. I had nothing to do with it. All right, it. take it easy. She told you, didn't she? Didn't she tell you where to get it? Doesn't make any difference. It does to me. Uh, All she ever right. wanted was a good time. All the time wanting to go to the best places. All the time in the expensive clothes. You lousy bum, that's all she is. All right, that's enough of that. You're not kidding. Go with me if I never saw her again. It'd be the best thing. Well, then you're going to be happy. Huh? That's the way it'll be. Another team of men came out from the office and took over the stakeout on the apartment. Frank and I drove Ronald Saba down to the city hall. We put in a call to the receiving hospital and found that the wounded officer would recover. 6.57 p.m. We started to lay out the evidence for the suspect. We checked the gun through our record section. It's the one you stole from Hector Pip yesterday. Mistake someplace. Yeah, but we didn't make it. You got nothing to hold me on. Nothing. Four of the victims have seen your picture. They're willing to swear that you're one of the men who held him up. Bunch of creeps, that's all they are, the whole slew of them. Sure. Come on, where do we pick up your partner? I keep telling you guys, I haven't got any partner. I don't know what you're talking about. You want to explain the gun? I don't have to. I never saw that gun before. You guys turned it on me, that's what you say. Well, I say it ain't mine. You planted it. What about the victims? They made a mistake. It's happened before. Lots of times. You read about it all the time where some joker gets up in court, swears he knows some fella guy ends up spending a couple of years for something he didn't do. All the time, there's stories like that in the paper. Mm-hmm. All the time. Well, you sit there and think you're clean. We got it figured different. I don't care how you got it figured. I'm telling the story the way it happened. Now, you keep talking about this fellow Whale or whatever it is. I don't know. I never heard of him. All these jobs you say I did. I, I don't know anything about them either. I'll get it. Oh, yeah, well. Just got a call from D. Lightner. Yeah. Picked up the line. Yeah, he copped out. Gave him the whole story. We're bringing him in now. Okay. Well, you just heard it, Sabah. How about it? You want to make a statement now? Might go easier if you tell us. Get him out of here! Right, grab him! Right. Come on! Sit down there. Come on, let me out of here! Let me out! All right, now on your feet. Get up. Lousy fat slob. He just kept his mouth shut, that's all. Just kept his big fat mouth shut. We've been all right. Him and his big mouth. Now, let's go. Him and his big fat mouth. Right into the joint. That's where he's put us. Right into the joint. That's right. His idea, the whole thing. He's as full of hot air as he is. Well, I hope he's happy. Look what he did. He got me a ticket right into the joint. No. Huh? You paid your own way. The story you've just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On October 18th, trial was held in Department 94, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. Ronald Evan Saba and Gerard Stephen Llewellyn were tried and convicted of robbery in the first degree six counts and received sentence as prescribed by law. Robbery in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than five years on each count. 
Dragnet, the story of your police force in action is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Welcome back. Well, we get to see kind of an interesting contrast of uh, styles when it comes to talking to the police. And, of course, uh, when the criminal is actually caught, he blames this woman who was not romantically into either he or his friend uh, for causing this whole uh, a crime spree because of her extravagant taste. Because that's really that sort of, you know, it's somebody else's fault thing that uh, police uh, probably hear quite a bit. Well, some listener comments and feedback now. Taz uh, writes in the recommendation from Facebook, uh, so laid back and easy to find. I listen to it almost every night so I can fall asleep. Well, glad to be a service, Taz. Thanks so much for the recommendation. I also want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And thank you so much to Robert. Uh, Robert has uh, been uh, one of our Patreon supporters uh, since August of 2016. Uh, currently supporting us at the uh, Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Robert. And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow as we celebrate 3,150 episodes. And then on Monday, we'll be back with uh, Box 13 Tuesday. We'll begin Roger Kilgore, Public Defender, and then next Saturday, another episode of Dragnet. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.